Hey, what do I know? It's, I'm going to school today, kids. What, how can I even say? I, you know, we look at Greg Kelly. He's got a storied history in broadcasting. We go to Bill O'Reilly. He's on a hard fade, um, uh, selling a particularly fine slice of racism to an increasingly uh, dead audience. And, and then trying to sell them gold on their way out the door so they can, I don't know, whatever, pack their coffin with it because fuck those grandkid hippies. Um, you like the background? Oh, I'm glad. Um, uh, it was here earlier, Wes. Uh, I'm sorry if you missed it. You should, yeah. So anyways, we got to go to somebody. Maybe, maybe I need a raw approach. Maybe we need to go to somebody and uh, brace yourself. Matt Gates is filling in. Um, is he on Rob Schmidt's show? Is he on Rob shit? Uh huh. How they can avoid a gun show down doing it. Oh, is he filling in on Greg Kelly's show right after they changed the fucking time slot? I'm confused. This okay, it says the title of this says Matt Gates, I offer you a sincere confession, which is just fucking gross. Like uh, on why House Republicans have been sh uh, slow at keeping the Biden administration accountable, how they can avoid a government shutdown, and more on Newsmax's Greg Kelly reports, where I think he's hosting, isn't he? Is he filling in? Jesus Christ. They give Greg Kelly a new time slot, and then they put Matt in it? Maybe, was he that? You, Gre Greg, are you that fucking lazy? You had to do a morning show? You had to sleep it off the rest of the day? What are House Republicans even doing? The House of Representatives... What are they doing? ...is the sole node of power in the federal government controlled by Republicans. I know. I work there. <laughs> work. Um, also, you, you have a, you have a razor-thin, a, a wafer-thin margin. And tens of millions of Americans rest their hope on the House and the House alone. To yeah, and if uh, there were more, there, whereas hundreds of millions of Americans are hoping they don't get more power. To stop the terrible things that are going on. And so I offer you this sincere confession. Um, so you're going to go into the Greenberg, Jeff Greenberg stuff? We aren't putting up the fight you deserve, and it sickens me. Oh, I see. You're confessing to what other people are doing. We fought for better than this in January during the contest over the House speakership. Mm, no, you didn't. You just dragged out your own internal bullshit and ended up exactly where you were. There is plenty that needs to be done, and we have the power to do it, but we- No, you don't. You, you actually don't. We must stop fiddling around like Nero as Rome burns. Uh, okay. Fiddling as Rome burns, as in actually playing the fiddle, like playing an instrument. Not, fiddle, not playing with a fidget spinner, you dumb fuck. I know I have a role in that, too. I hear you. Joe Biden- <laughs> So people are screaming. Okay. Moment of good news. Uh, enjoy this if you can, folks. I know his face makes you upset. It's it's fucking gross. Um, but it, take take a little bit of pleasure in knowing that this asshole's voicemail is full all fucking day with people going, "You're in it with Marjorie Taylor Greene, you bunch of this is just bullshit. You're probably a a, a fed plant just like those other fuckers." I know the Democrats have created major problems, and it is incumbent upon us to solve them. On the border, our own Homeland Security our own. Department literally built an app for the cartels. Why haven't we impeached my orcas? Yeah, they didn't. They didn't build it for it. Why would the article say exploit U.S. government CBP one app if if they built it for them? I uh, put. Would it be put it to good use? Our own Homeland Security Department literally built an app for the cartels. Why? Is he repeating? What the hell was that? Our Wait, back the fuck up. Us ...to solve them. On the border. Our own Homeland Security Department literally built an app for the cartels. Why haven't we impeached my orcas? Our own Homeland Security Department literally built an app for the cartels. Why haven't we impeached my orcas yet? Oh, he forgot to say yet. Right, he forgot to say yet, so they redid it. And, and no one watches, I rest my case, no one fucking watches Greg Kelly's show, even the editors. Our own leadership whips hard for big spending bills, not so much to impeach the man who has converted our border into a turnstile for thugs and criminals. 
The Department of Defense. If it's a turnstile, then they go right back out, I guess. So, okay. has become an abortion. I thought it was open. Why would you have a turnstile at something that's open? Are they obviously keeping track of them? So travel agency that throws drag shows on the side. Alabama Senator Tommy Tuberville is fighting back and fighting hard, holding up promotions until the law is followed. Yeah, they granted administrative absence up to three weeks, travel allowance, transportation allowance. Okay. All of the top positions will be in limbo by the end of the year if the Pentagon doesn't get their act together. Or if Tommy Tuberville doesn't uh, stop trying to act in a ferociously undemocratic way when he doesn't have the votes to actually pass a change. And instead of having his back, even some Senate Republicans openly criticize Senator Tuberville. They're Tuberville. Senator Tuberville. Are they going to do that one again? What do you think? Even some Senate Rep they didn't roll back on that Republicans one? Republicans openly criticize Sen Say Tuberville Senator again. Tuberville. They're pathetic. Tuberville previously coached college. They're pathetic. I can pronounce pathetic. It's hard to say Tuberville. Football in the SEC. So I'm guessing he's faced tougher criticism than what is offered in America's own version of the House of Lords. Uh, America's own version of the House of Lords. Okay, we don't have a House of Lords uh, because uh, it's not about land ownership. You still have to get voted in. And secondly, no, he hasn't. Being yelled at over a fucking sports uh, tournament of some sort between two teams has fuck all, like, the, the consequences of which are so, so much lower than leaving us unprepared militarily. But I don't know. Uh, who am I? I'm not Tommy Tuberville. <laughs> The ATF wants to throw you in jail for selling one gun while the Secret Service is... Well, it depends on what that gun is. If you sell it to a drug dealer or a murderer or you sell it under the table or... Yeah. What, what, if it has, uh, if it's an automatic weapon? If it's a laws rocket? What kind of gun are we talking about, fuckhead? It's a gun. It doesn't matter. <laughs> is covering up Hunter Biden's gun crimes faster than a cat covers up turds in a litter box. Obviously not a cat owner. Sometimes it's a long, drawn-out process. I can hear the scratching and the <laughs> for at all hours. More on that later in the show. Good. More on cat turds later in the show. I get it. I, I get it. So you're going to have lunch with somebody? And federal government spending grew by 40% during COVID. Right. I, uh, most of it when Trump was president and multi-trillion dollar annual deficits are no way to run a civilized country. I can't even believe I have to say that. Well, uh, we don't run them normally. A lot of times when we do run them, it has, it's because there's a war or in this case, a pandemic. It is degrading and insulting to the American people to dilute their spending power so that we can fund entities like the UN, the World Health Organization, other globalist entities, and whatever Zelensky can imagine asking for next. Right. What, I mean, he, Zelensky is why eggs are expensive. Now Republicans are trying to sell some one. You are a Republican. You are a Republican. One percent cut after a 40 percent increase in federal spending is some sort of monumental win. That would be like me gaining 20 pounds and then congratulating myself for downing a bag of kale chips on the way to Dairy Queen for another dipped cone. Sir, Can. it doesn't make any sense. So it doesn't make any sense. I've read it and it still doesn't make any sense. <laughs> downing a bag of kale chips on my way to Dairy Queen to get another dipped cone. This is his criticism of his own party, by the way. Donald Trump now faces 91 <laughs> charges. Meanwhile, I do like this graphic, I will say. It looks like shit, but I'm enjoying it. While no one in the Biden family has even received a subpoena yet. Hmm. It's almost as if the people who hand out the subpoenas have actually seen all the evidence, or uh, what they would call evidence. I would call it information, because it's only evidence if it's tied to a crime that you can actually prove. But either way, uh, they, if they wanted to, why haven't they done it? If they could. They obviously think it's easy. They obviously think if you, you know, they were able to do it to Trump and he was innocent, it was perfect and he perfect phone call and all this and they threw all this shit at him and he's totally innocent and they could just, you could indict a ham sandwich. Well then get at it, motherfucker. Keep this in mind. At this point during the Democrat control of Congress, when they had power, Donald Trump Jr. had already given over eight hours of testimony under oath. He had been brought in three times. Now, I understand that the Oversight Committee wants a full grasp of documents before bringing Hunter in. 
Mm -hmm. But we can bring him in more than once, like they did to Donald Trump Jr. Well, no, obviously, uh, he was, he, as a surrogate, th this was also during a time when Trump was supposedly uh, separated from his business, when he clearly wasn't. But we'll get to that later. If these things frustrate and anger you, well... And he was, by the way, Don was at that fucking meeting in Trump Tower with the with the Russian uh, lawyer who was trying to get the um, it, like the sanctions lifted, all that shit. And the question ultimately was, and it was the you know obviously it's clear that he or more than likely Jared had Trump on speakerphone, so he was present at the meeting without being present. Welcome to my hellscape. Oh God, I fucking had that. Things. W Welcome to my hellscape. Oh my God, fucking the whining. Oh change without force and they weren't supposed to be this way i'm sounding the alarm now because we all have to take ownership for this and we have to fix it immediately joe biden is taking this uh-huh yeah i'm uh uh jaitanya or let's see uh how much time do you think he's gonna need um i don't think my yeah i just don't i my, my smart i uh, my my apple watch is good but i don't think it goes in decades like it, you can't set a timer for decades anybody know how to oh. country and running it into the ground and the deadline to fund government is quickly approaching september 30th otherwise we face a government shutdown this is when many elites all democrats and even some republicans oh okay so i'm glad to know that democrats congratulations we're elites now yep we're elites i'm sure i qualify i was you know I'm, I've been on several lovely television shows, so I'm sure I qualify as a Hollywood elite. Although they love calling me a C-lister, which is weird because they also say that every A-lister drinks, you know, a fresh baby made adrenochrome. So I don't know how that mean every B, C and D-lister is just a solid actor, or a really talented person who refuses to drink baby spine juice. All right, I'll take that as a compliment, dickhead. We'll try to convince you that the world is ending and we must continue harmful, big spending policies of Joe Biden or else. Fall risks. House Republicans are threatening a government shutdown and an impeachment inquiry against President Biden. Congress returns to work this week facing an end of the month. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, my gosh. Headline that, that, uh. The ginger ale tickles my nose. On federal agencies or risk a government shutdown. With just a few more days until another possible government shutdown. Yeah, that's just materially true. Again, you you got, yes, there are Republicans threatening to shut down the government for this specific, who give, what the fuck? Who cares? You guys do this shit all the time. They're not scaremongering, it's true. But no, that's not true. We need to enforce a hard line and force their hand. There are so many things we're letting them get away with. But oh my God, they're getting away with everything, you guys. Anyone who speaks out against these policies will watch out. You're an extremist. From yeah, you're an extremist. The things they say about you. Oh my God. Like, really? Come on. I mean, bro. From the White House themselves, here's what they had to say. In Does this guy, do they, where do you go to college? Do they actually... Is there a class you take on being smarmy or is it, is there a specific frat you join to learn how? Oh my God. Like, God, who's like, so. In a statement, they said the last thing the American people deserve is for extreme house Republicans to trigger a government shut. I know that. No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. If you're going to put the quote up on the screen, and even, I mean, you're new, you might not know this, you're just filling in. But um, if you're going to put a quote up, uh, read the actual words that are up there. Don't fill in your own words and expect us to be upset about shit because you misread it on purpose. Uh, Extreme House members. Now, do they mean Republicans? Probably. Do, do they mean maybe the squad or some others? Might get a wild hair up their ass to join, you know, create strange bedfellows to stop some spending thing they don't like. Maybe. Down that hurts our economy, undermines our disaster preparedness, and forces our troops to work without guaranteed pay. Which is all true. We are not extremists for wanting the best for our country. 
Uh, yeah, and the best thing for our country is for our troops to work without guaranteed pay and for us to not be prepared for a disaster and for us to immediately pay down everything after a uh, after a pandemic as fast as possible in an economically detrimental way that can cut off all social programs and leave people in the in a lurch right as they're getting their their life back in order again because god damn it republicans have a hair's breadth lead in the house and there is no way to drain the swamp without cutting off the money and stopping its flow to buy weaponized government. Weird. Did you tell this to Trump? Because apparently he was going to get rid of the swamp and then he forgot or something. I don't take lessons on extremism from the people who gaslit the George Floyd riots, tortured FBI whistle. Gaslit the George Floyd riots. What would they tell the George Floyd riots that you're not rioting? Again, what a douchebag on extremism from the people who gaslit the George Floyd riots, tortured FBI whistleblowers, and then literally tortured FBI whistleblowers, tortured them, tortured FBI. Okay. So, um, so no one, literally no one, uh, uh, this, this is, uh, this is like the burning straw man converted the vice presidency into an ATM machine for a ne'er-do-well son. Oh, we're going back to the Obama Biden. I, I, I see. I was like, what did Kamala Harris do? Reports are out this weekend that the Biden administration is setting up a war room with dozens of lawyers, legislative aides and comm staffers. Yeah, like fucking adults getting ready to deal with a problem so that they don't get distracted. N notice what he's not doing is setting up golf trips, which is tr what Trump did during his legal troubles. And that's why they've come back to bite him in the ass. To lead an aggressive response to impeachment inquiries. Aggressive response. Um, is this the current state of like college broadcasting classes? This is, is this how he thinks? This is... Is this how he thinks people behave when they host shows? Does he, uh, I'm going to like hit that word. Is that? <laughs> Cause I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm watching another broadcaster. Just pick anybody at random Tucker or, or, or Laura Ingraham through Gates's eyes. Like this is what he sees them doing. When he watches, like, I love when they get like this, when they're like, nuh uh, and they put that, like, nuh uh energy and everything. Imagine if they had put that much effort into securing the southern border, set up a war room for that. But of course, they don't care as much about your safety as they do about keeping power. And they think that power is in jeopardy. Well, how do, uh, if you're not, if people don't feel safe, eventually you're gonna lose the vote, no matter what. So obviously, there's a, they have a reason to keep that power, if they, even if they're just power hungry. As a matter of fact, you could argue that, that sealing up the border and doing something, you know, stuff that's drastic like that is specifically a power grab. Jeopardy. Now, one man in the House who does sincerely want to cut spending is Paul Gosar. Budget Chairman Jody Arrington of Texas. At the beginning of this Congress, Chairman... If you question the swamp, you're extreme, is the... See, this is a recurring theme. I, I mean, this is all stupid, but this is the part question. You hear this shit all the time. Alex Jones did the exact same fucking thing in a in a clip um, where, like, it's the whole. We're just asking questions. We're just asking questions. If you even ask a question, you get thrown in jail. No one ever is getting thrown in jail for asking a question. Not fucking once. Find me a situation where a person has been fined or kicked off of someplace, even when they're asking the question erroneously. They're they're faking it. They're they're or, or it's sarcastic or ironic, and everybody knows it. If it's still written or said in a, in the form of a question, you don't get in trouble. That's why the fallback is I'm just asking questions when they've just made a series of fucking statements. It like this idea if you question the swamp. It's just fucking ridiculous. I, I, here's, here's, uh, you want to call me extreme? Here, I'll question the swamp. I don't believe the swamp exists. How you like that? Feel free to at me. It's like the establishment. It's just this fucking made up ghost story you guys tell each other. You might as well just say fucking Illuminati. Because at a certain point, 
like the mixture of like lobbyists and and uh, you know people from like the nursing uh, uh, union and the teachers union being the same as fucking Raytheon or or Dow Chemical lobbyists and that's equally part uh, uh, equal parts swamp when they go to Congress people where they specifically either have their headquarters or they have a particular issue in one of these districts that those folks they're they're doing it it's all equally swampy. And it's fucking not. It's very different when Dow Chemical lobbies for a favor from the government and the, the nurses or the teachers union does it. And, and But these guys want you to believe that it's all part of the same, just kind of generalized. You don't even understand it. I would argue that el elites and swamp and establishment are like a stiff arm to you. Don't even try to understand it. Don't even try to think about it. It's, a, it's the swamp. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's Chinatown, Jake. You know, it's just so it's so murky. The swamp is like, you don't even try to understand it. If you if you stared at a swamp, you'd be like, I don't know. It looks dangerous and gross and it's probably septic and there's probably an alligator in there. And I don't even know where I'm going. And I don't, my, my compass doesn't work. That's what you're supposed to, that's what swamp brings to mind when I, and, and, and it should to him too, because this motherfucker comes from a state with actual swamp. Um, this idea of, of using that phrase, the establishment is like, oh, these people made this thing and now they won't let you in, which it also projects onto your mind. What do they mean by establishment? Well, if it's established and you're not in it, then they're going to, they're building a wall of their own to keep you out. Whereas our, our government system is such that you could absolutely run for fucking office and you could absolutely fucking win. The fact that this dickhead, even though he's second generation politics in Florida, his dad was uh, big in Florida politics, even though that's true, tons of people run in Florida uh, just fucking rando and win. Therefore, there is no establishment. It's just like the Twitter files. The minute Twitter could tell the FBI no, end of fucking story. There is no conspiracy. There is no control. The government is not shutting down free speech. They just made a suggestion. And some of the times... Twitter said yes, and sometimes Twitter said no. That's not control. And so this, this constant bullshit about the fucking swamp, and the other thing is, if it's a fucking swamp, if it's if DC's a fucking swamp and it's worthless and, and it's all just these jerks, they don't, they don't understand the voters and blah, 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 then stay in local fucking politics, asshole, and be the gatekeeper for your, run for governor. Run for state senate. Be the be the the legislative, um, you know, defensive line against federal overreach. If that's what you really fucking believe, or or you could bullshit everybody and tell them don't throw me in that briar patch, essentially, and say and and spend half your time in D.C. doing exactly what you say the swamp is always doing eating out with lobbyists and hanging out with your like bros in Congress and, and shit talking your constituents. I'm sick of this stuff. Like I'm sick of the fucking, like you guys know, I hate the whole establishment bullshit line. Um, but God damn, am I tired of this fucking swamp nonsense, especially coming from people who ran for office that they knew would take place in DC. You don't like the DC swamp? Here's a good idea. Become your state's comptroller. Like a real fucking job. One of the offices that almost nobody runs for because it's a pain in the ass. It's a lot of work. I, I, uh, this is just fucking lazy. Oh, if uh, Santos appears to be making a plea deal? Well, it, it, he'll, I'm sure Matt will have him on as a guest to talk about it. If he takes a plea deal, does that mean he's got to vacate a seat? Because you got to take a plea deal, you're pleading guilty to something. Arrington presented a balanced budget plan to House Republicans. It was bold, serious, and absolutely necessary. Bold. Bold, meaning you don't have the votes. Bold in the way that if you presented this, there is no fucking way it clears any of the hurdles. Necessary to save the country. Though Representative Arrington and I don't agree on everything, I can honestly report to you that his work inspired me that balanced budgets are not impossible. We can actually get there and do it. But we haven't seen that balanced budget up for a vote yet. And 
Right, because it will not pass. Chairman Arrington joins us now to discuss why. Mr. Chairman, you really put on a show when you got conservatives fired up about the budget plan you presented at the beginning of this Congress. When can the American people expect to see it? And how would you describe the budget that your uh, committee... Here's a good idea. Post it. You got a budget. Put it on your fucking website. Intends to mark up. Maybe you did. We'll see. Well, Matt, it's great to be with you. And uh, we'll be rolling out this uh, budget. It's a 10-year uh, fiscal framework. We call it a budget resolution. Okay, so it's not a budget. It's a fiscal framework. Right out of the fucking gate. Goddamn swamp gets us again. And uh, it has all the necessary things to put our nation on a path to balance and beyond. We, we have to rein in the unbridled spending that's bankrupting the country, caused this cost of living crisis most recently. Uh, no, it did. That will destroy. COVID did. We, we just went through a pandemic, fuckhead. A little over, a uh, little over, uh, you know, 10 years. Yeah, a little over 10 years from the last financial crisis when people still hadn't fully recovered from that. So that's that's why it had the impact that it did. It's, we didn't run these deficits up just because we decided we wanted shiny new... We don't have maglev trains in every city in the fucking country just because Biden and the progressives want trains everywhere. Destroy our leadership in the world and our children's future. So we have to do a few things. Let me summarize what's going to be in this. Yeah, just summarize. I don't need the actual budget. It'll be a couple of weeks. We've got the votes in committee, Matt, to mark it up and pass it out of committee. We want to get... You got the votes to mark it up and pass it up. Pass it. So if you mark it up, any changes might be made to get the votes? ...to 218. But this is going to be a conservative budget uh, that focuses on right-sizing the bureaucracy, resetting at pre-COVID, pre-inflationary levels of spending on discretionary, capping at 1% through 10 years. That's $3 trillion in savings. Reining in mm -hmm. the drivers of the debt. That's entitlement spending. Ah, entitlement spending. That's what makes it bold, I'm going to guess. That's right. Uh, there, here it comes. Reining in entitlement spending. Yep. Tell you what, mark it up. Uh, float it out there. Yep, there you go. Rain, in, rain that entitlement and stuff. And there's in. a significant effort there to make health care and welfare work for the American people. And yeah, emphasis on work. For those who need it the most. And then and then ultimately, we've got to get this economy going again. We have to it, is, it is going, asshat. It's literally, honest to God, the fucking Fed is trying to cool the, the economy off. That's the point. That's the problem. That's why the inflation rate keeps going up because the Fed's like, Jesus Christ, I keep raising the interest rates and the, the people keep hiring. People keep spending. People keep going out and doing shit. What the fuck? To return to pro-work, pro-growth, sure. pro-energy policies. And uh, you get $3 trillion if you grow by 1% over 10 years in deficit reduction. Those are the three key pillars of our budget resolution. Right. So they're going to cut it beyond the actual needed spending to maintain these programs, which lead to a growing economy that we've had over time. Because again, everybody will talk about our ballooning deficit, but our economy, but for the $7 trillion that Donald Trump added to it, has basically been one-to-one, 100% -one, of, of GDP in terms of uh, our debt um, every year, even as it grows, which is the part nobody talks about. Because let me, let me show you something real quick, if I may. May I? May I? Hold on one second. Um, hold on, Jamie. Jamie, bring up the bring up the video, the 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 Bloomberg chart that I once said about the thing with the guy and uh, with the numbers on it, the ones I didn't read. Bring up the numbers I didn't read and put them up on the big screen up there. Jamie, Jamie, put that. Can you find that article that I thought about for a second? The one I dreamed while I was on uh, drinking ayahuasca. Um, the okay. Hold on one second. Um, let's see if I can. Yeah, here we go. So, um, in let's see, I'm gonna try to do this way. Uh, U.S. Let's see, debt growth.
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me get this chart. There you go. Now, whoops. Now this is a uh, stretch. This out. Now these are not. Uh, let let me let me uh, preface this that this. Um, I'm going to show you a couple charts, and they are. Where, how long is the length of this? Yeah. Uh, debt trends over time. There we go. So, yeah, here we are. 19, okay, here we go. Um, these aren't on the same scale. One's, one's just since 2000. The other one goes all the way back to 1922. So, it'll look more extreme when I show it to you. But here's the U.S. Uh, debt, um, uh, chart of the U.S. debt. It's at $30 trillion right now. Now, if you'll notice right here, Pow! Just, just fucking leaps. But it was still on a, you know, a steady climb. Here's two. This is 2002. So this is about, you know, around 2000 right here. It dips down right after 9/11, and then after 9/11, ba bam, it starts going up. And for a bunch of different reasons. One of them is, and and again, um, this is uh, since since about 2000. Now I'm going to show you something else. This is the U.S. Uh, um, here it is. Let's start back here. This is 2000. Okay. So in 2000, the GDP of the United States was about $10 trillion. Um, and the, let's see. And in 2000, where is it? The debt was, uh, e about equal 9,000, uh, 700 uh, billion, 9 trillion, 700 billion. Okay. Then if you'll notice um, right about here, the little lurch up like around, uh, where is it, 2000? It, it's on a steady climb, but it's not, you know, it arcs up a little higher. There's a dip down around 2008 because they reshuffle a ton of debt, which is really fascinating. Uh, it goes down to 14 and then it keeps climbing, goes up to here. And then right in, you know, in tw here's uh, 2019 into 2020, goes down a little bit like a trillion dollars, and then pow, 2020, here you go. It just, it just goes on a rocket. And this is all, this is all COVID right here. This is all just the response to COVID. Basically because the entire, uh, or like during, like, well, the COVID drop is here. Boom, boom, there you go, um, in GDP. And then it climbs back up afterwards. Now, this is not a fait accompli, by the way. This is not guaranteed in any way. And we hit this point and it kept going up and that's a good thing. But our GDP is continuing to climb with no signs of fucking abating anyways. Um, and if you'll notice, our, uh, our economy right now, 25, 000, uh, $25 billion economy right now. That's the GDP in, as of 2022. It's gone up since then too. And our debt uh, at its peak, if we had not taken on COVID, that same arc, if you'll notice, it's not that weird off it's it's on pace without the dip like we're just growing at this steady pace this was the hash just like 2008 was a hash but if you look the gdp of the united states has been growing almost against the same art if you back up far enough and you will you get a little distance you get 50 years from now all the news stories about the fucking economy will seem like what were they yelling about it just kind of it's like the stock market since 1920 right it's the same thing okay so this this big burst here, this is here's Reagan, and then they just decided, you know, this is when Republicans decided deficits don't matter, whatever, blah blah blah. But ultimately, a lot of these things are rotating debt that that have a lot to do with putting money out into the world. As more and more economies start, we got more international. This is the this is the global economy right here. Is that they use U.S. dollars as the reserve currency, so you got to print a lot of fucking dollars. And if you'll recall, when we print money, the U.S. Treasury takes on debt to do it. Right? This is what you've always heard. They print them. They they like they write these treasuries. They print these dollars, and then they go out there, and then all these money this money's around causing inflation. Well, these most of these are out in the fucking world. They're not even here. So. But I, but I would like to remind everybody that here, again, this is the GDP 
of the United States since everybody was like, and all the people, the Republicans, it's Republican, Democrat, didn't fucking matter. Um, it's been growing along this line and it's grown at a faster clip since we started taking on debt because it's an investment strategy, just like any companies that take on debt. And then they use that to finance even more growth and the like. And so the consistency of this, the, the hell debt, you're paying the interest, right? You don't even have to pay down the principal, but the interest on the debt is a tremendous amount of money, but it's guaranteeing a giant arc. Because again, you're you're not paying the principal on this debt. You should at some point, we'll pay it down. That's what, what's what Clinton was uh, proposing to do and started doing. But if you're just paying the, like the interest on the debt, as big as this number is, understand that while that's large, it ref it reflects in this number. It reflects a, a level of growth that is exponential compared to it. So needless to say, these fuckwads do not know what they are talking about, nor uh, and nor would they even, uh, I guess, presume to do anything about it. Not really. So, and by the way, this whole leveraging our children's future, blah, 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 they don't really believe that either. And the economy has grown under their feet as this debt has been accrued. At some point, you have to start shaving it down and managing it at a certain point. But nobody expects us to be at like 85% of GDP because that, in their theory, it makes overpowering debt. You could do it over time, but the idea that you have to do it drastically is a fucking cartoon. Yeah, and it's music to my ears. And you heard it here first. Within the next two weeks, you're going to see the House budget get marked up. Great. Does Trump have it? Two weeks. Yeah, that's the, that's the fucking maggot mating cry. Two weeks in committee. I think that's something everyone looks forward to. Uh, now, by this stage of the game, I was hoping. And by the way, it should be made in call, but I said cry, but I stand by it. I think that works better. <laughs> that we would have the 12 individual appropriations bills moving to the floor. That hasn't happened yet. I'm concerned about that as we face uh, a, a you know end of government funding at the end of the month. Uh, do you share my concern that we haven't individually moved these appropriations bills to the floor? Um, you're in charge of shit, fucko. Yeah, because we've, uh, we, it's not just about funding the government. We've got to fund the government, but we've got to fund a government that uh, is responsive to the American people, focused on its constitutional mission. We've got to root out the woke and waste. We've, we've got to root out the woke and waste. Got to. Uh, uh, mm. No, no, you don't. You gotta, it, the, the woke isn't costing us anything, fuckhead. I don't, I don't know what the budgetary outlay for woke is, but eat shit. Like, you, you're not gonna hold the entire fucking military budget hostage because you don't like some level of DEI training or something around people where they teach rednecks how to, how not to get in fights with, with inner city black dudes when they're serving in the same fucking unit together. We've got to hold a, this administration accountable. You know, and I know that we have they are. power of subpoena. We have power of the purse. Those are the two levers and we've got to use them. Yeah, you're not going to subpoena them into signing off on your budget, fuckwad. As a matter of fact, you're talking about spending more money. You're talking about allocating funds for the committee to go after Hunter Biden or, or Shemp Biden or any of the fucking rando Bidens. For example, what good is funding the government if it can't do its first and most important job, providing a common defense? And of course, this administration has totally unilaterally surrendered control of our border to the drug cartels, the terrorist drug cartels. Uh, who uh, so you're saying... Uh I would say you've got committee power. I have a suggestion. Here's a good idea. Call the uh, the heads of Border Patrol in Texas and Arizona and uh, and uh, I guess in um, yeah, you if they bring in like department maybe any anybody who's directly on the ground, any DHS um, liaisons, any of that stuff. Bring them all in and ask them why. Uh, the Border Patrol agents are just letting people through. Ask them. Ask them why they're just, you know, because there's a wall there, obviously, and they're finding ways to get around or whatever. Why aren't these guys stopping them? Why are they just not doing anything about it? Why are they, why are they letting them get by?
Why? What, what did they just give up when Trump lost and they just refuse to now? Because if people are if if people if they're getaways, then make the argument of why and how they are getting away. Bring them in. You've already got that. So you don't even have to add money to the budget for that. You already have oversight on on that spending of the border. Bring those fuckers in. Let them tell you the story about why they're letting people through. Because they ain't. We're flooding our, our country and my home state with drugs and crime. And, and it's the leading cause of death for, for people 18 to 45 in this country. We're sure. losing 300 Americans a day. If we can't get that right, what, what good is a government? All right, fuckhead. The fentanyl thing needs to be handled. But this cartoonish idea that we could just stop it somehow. Um, yeah, 90% of drugs come in through the ports and a lot of this comes through there. But so little fentanyl is needed to to, to like dose everybody or, or to add to or cut with other drugs because it's so strong. That the idea that it, like you would see it coming or that it's so like they're like weed bales, which you could spot. It's hard to get bales of weed across the fucking border. That's hence cocaine and heroin being the primary ones because you can you can liquefy or gelify, I guess, heroin and you could brick cocaine and bring it across. But fentanyl, like, it's so little of it is necessary to spread out over a, you know, you could cut it so much easier that it's just... It's very difficult to get it coming across the border. A little bit goes a long way with fentanyl, as the as the people who made it will tell you. And so, I don't know what change they think would would eliminate that aspect of it. Because you could argue that the the more you try to clamp down on drugs coming across the southern border, the more fentanyl comes across because it's easier to sneak across the border because there's less of it. To, you need less of it to sell a lot of it because it's potent of the people by the people and for the people just shut the fuck up i hate when they fucking try to quote the goddamn constitution to just pat themselves on the back yeah we get it brick wall it's not really necessary we got it you know, american flag there's three bricks behind you there's probably from that say trump wall on them or some shit there's a little plastic tractor just go play with that dumb dumb I'm going to bring everybody into the room when you counsel a lot of uh, members of Congress about the budget and the spending cuts that we have to engage in. You have a saying, you tell folks, all the easy choices are in the past. Ahead are hard choices. What are some of the hard choices that we're going to... Yeah, this is why it's not going to get out of committee. I have to ask our Republican colleagues to stand with you on. Well, you know, to me, a lot of them aren't so hard. We we have 250 billion last year in waste, fraud, and abuse. We've got to do better there. One way you do that, Matt, is states have to have skin in the game. Uh, they know how to target the people who need uh, these resources, and they they will have better controls if they're responsible and accountable for the money being spent. Well, but but you got health care and waste. But also, if they're given a block grant. They'll divert it because a lot of the states don't want the stuff. And red states, they don't want, you know, Medicare or welfare funding or support from the government. So they'll divert it to projects and pat themselves on the back for infrastructure while turning down infrastructure funds. They'll divert what are effectively welfare funds to that kind of shit because it was a block grant to the state and whatever. And there's no fraud because uh, what would have been stolen, I, I built a bridge and named it after me. Welfare, those are the two big drivers on the entitlement side. Mm -hmm. And it's not that hard to, to expect people who were capable to work. We did modest efforts in the debt ceiling deal to that end, but there's much more to be done, not only in food stamps, Medicaid, and other means-tested welfare programs. But look, it's also not hard to reverse no, no, no doubt, No doubt, Mr. Chairman, we need those welfare-to-work programs. Now, I do want to get your reaction to this. He's, I guess he's got one more question for him, but they were walking down a into a fucking corner. The Biden administration rejects the argument that government spending is inducing this inflation. Take a listen. Yeah, it isn't. I'm sick of this stuff. We have to talk about it because the American people think the reason for inflation is government spending more money. Simply not true. So Chairman Arrington, what's your best evidence to the contrary?
Yeah, there it is. Best evidence to the contrary. Let's hear it. Well, it's insulting. And, and that's not a reason. That's that's your emotional response. Even Democrat economists like Jason Furman, Larry Summers, they warned, as Republicans did, that the $11 trillion in spending over the last two years, six of which went to the national debt, all of which went to a cost of living uh, crisis, record hikes in interest rates. And in a Again, you lose $20 trillion in the COVID shutdown and the ensuing loss of business, livelihood, employment, savings, healthcare bills, all kinds of stuff, money that it would have, could have, or should have been spent, but would never met its match and doubled as it would in the economy normally, disappears, just fucking disappears. And the government tries to patch that hole with $6 trillion and you can't do it. You cannot patch a $20 trillion hole with $6 trillion. Economy that's stagnant at best and has- No, it's not stagnant at best. It's an outlook of, of a potential recession. Yeah, it's had an outlook of a potential recession because it, according to these economists for three fucking years, because they keep leaving the biggest element out of the equation. They keep, they don't want to, they put an X in where COVID was and go solve for X as if this is just like everything else. Again, it's the, it's the railroad spike analogy. I know I keep going back and forth to it, but these motherfuckers, every time the guy goes into the doctor's office, he's got recurring headaches. The doctor ups his prescription or lowers his prescription, depending on what he needs. And then one day he walks in with a spike, a railroad spike stuck through his head. And the doc says, head still bothering you, huh? Um, uh, we could, let's up your, you know, take a couple of Excedrin. It's not the same fucking thing. These assholes need to stop talking about government spending as if it was done out of nowhere. Same thing with 2009. That's why they, they, they all said the government was going to, like, the economy was going to crash under Obama. Everything was going to fucking fall apart because they're like, all this government spending. Like, motherfucker, we're filling in a hole. This was caused by runaway spending. No, it was not. And failed economic policies. Like, no, it isn't. Paying people to stay home. and No, because... Dead workers can't go back to work when when there's an all clear. Instead of return to work after the government shutdowns. Yeah, which is way easier to do if you're not fucking dead. Uh, among other absolutely, things, absolutely. Like well, no, no, no. That was his whole reasoning. That was it. That it's the same shit. Like I, I don't know why I let my fucking hopes get up that he would actually try to throw some sort of numbers in there or something, but it was the same shit. It was the same money printer go burr and pay, and people didn't want to work so they stayed home blah 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 like this is this by the way this is a residual uh beef that they have with the american worker under trump that like in the fall of 2020 you motherfuckers wouldn't believe him when he said go back to work and go out and do stuff because people were still dying and we didn't have a vaccine yet and he didn't have a plan for that vaccine and everybody was like i'm not fucking good no i had a friend on a fucking ventilator and he never he's he's not coming off that fucking thing i'm not going back out there what are you nuts for for 12 50 an hour eat shit i'm staying home and they're still mad about that they're still mad at workers for not throwing themselves you know, out on on the road of broken glass for Donald Trump so he could walk over their fucking backs. They're still mad. These workers who would just, you're just paying people not to work. Lazy, fucking lazy, lazy. Everybody went back to work, motherfucker. Everybody. There are not enough workers for the open jobs because everybody went back to work. People wanted to. Fuck's sake, they just don't want to die for a for a fucking gateway job. Hey, we look forward to seeing that budget getting Yeah, we all do. No spending cuts, Chairman of the House Budget Committee, Jody Arrington. We look forward to thank seeing it soon. Pat. Thanks for joining me. That's so good. Thanks. I want to thank Greg Kelly for teaching me everything I know about broadcasting. Yeah. Um, good lord. Just fucking ah, for fire. Okay. Now, obviously, do I have any time left? No, I'm like, okay. Obviously, that's not the big story. Obviously, there's never going to be... That budget's not going to fucking happen. It's not, are you kidding me? It's not going to be a budget. You nuts?
They're never going to fucking clear that out of there and try to get a vote on that shit before the fucking government shutdown. You use that as leverage. You're going to bring out an entitlements cut budget that that tracks uh, um, like Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid spending below normal inflation at 1% when, when, when target inflation is 2 Dead fuck, I do. I do. I need a Snickers. Am I that out? Am, am I that outrageous right now? Am I? Am I? Am I? Hold on. Where is it? Outrageous. Oh, I don't have one on this screen. Sorry, my bad. Um, I forgot. I didn't put. I didn't put it on myself because I never use the word. Uh, how could someone like uh, lie like that and sleep at night? Um, well, I'll tell you this. Uh, Gates is well practiced at lying, so that's why. But the other guy just is stupid. Just stupid. I'm dead serious. I think a sitting member of uh, Congress hosting a fake news channel is criminal. Yeah, it's a little weird. It is because it's, you know, it's like a, you know, I, I guess it builds his audience for if he's going to, I maybe he doesn't get paid, but it's a contribution in kind to his campaign, I would say. 